Now, over the years, the Salomon brand has become really well known for producing some of the best trail running shoes and gear the world has ever seen, working closely with some super talented runners, including Killian Journey and Courtney Dullwater, who have to be two of the best sort of trail mountain ultra runners there's ever been. However, when it comes to their road running shoe lineup, they've been having a real big push over the last four or five years trying to break it into that very competitive market. And I would say a lot of their shoes have kind of missed the mark. However, I did really enjoy running in the Glide Maxis when we tested and reviewed them on the channel. And I thought that was a big step in the right direction. So today we are taking a look at its lighter, more stripped back brother, the Aero Glide. So let's give you the lowdown on Salomon's latest road running offering. And then we are lacing these up and taking them out for their first run. Welcome back everyone. Hope everybody is fit and well out there in YouTube world and thanks for joining us for another video. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So we are back with another first run, first impressions video and we're actually heading back onto the roads and it's gonna be my first outing on the hard stuff since taking on Reading Half Marathon. Now, if you haven't seen the video we put together of race day, then it's definitely worth checking out. Even if it's just to see me sort of gritting my teeth and suffering towards the end of those 13.1 miles. So I've left a link in the description for that video so you can check it out. But back to the shoe in question and the Salomon Aero Glides retail in the UK for 150 pounds. Weight wise, they come in at 285 grams in a UK 10 and we've got a 10 mil drop. So you get a stack height of 37.4 mil on the heel and 27.4 mil under your forefoot. So you can see you get a good helping of the soft stuff in the midsole. Speaking of the midsole, and Salomon have chosen to utilize their lightweight, super bouncy, high energy returning energy foam for the cushioning in the Aero Glides. Uh, this is uh, made using a blend of EVA and Olefin to give you a long lasting, comfortable ride. And I have to say it, I'm a really big fan of this compound and the brand seem to be sort of crossing it over into most of their shoes these days. So it can't just be me who likes it. And I think the energy foam has had a real big impact when it comes to their road running shoe lineup. Flipping the shoe over, you can see we've got a pretty wide platform on this shoe. And dare I say, it, it's very Hoka-like in its construction. So that's gonna give you that nice, wide, stable base to run off. And coating that midsole, we've got Salomon's Road Contagrip outsole, which has these nice, designed wide flat lugs to give you good levels of grip on hard surfaces, but also to offer good levels of durability. So giving you that perfect pairing for that harsh road environment. As far as the upper goes, Salomon have chosen to use a 3D open mesh in its construction to offer the runner maximum breathability. Uh, Salomon also claimed that it's got their brilliant SensiFit technology worked into the upper. Now, when I look inside the shoe, I can see that there's just a standard tongue there, so it's not actually gusseted into that upper which that tends to be the way they go when it comes to their sensi fit technology because that offers you that sort of band that wraps around your midfoot to give you that nice snug feel and good levels of lockdown. One of the issues in the Glide Max for me was that I did find it hard to keep that upper locked down while I was out for a run. It tended to work loose and that had a standard tongue in it very similar to this shoe. So going to be interesting to see how that performs out on today's run. And finishing up, we've got a moderate level of padding around that ankle collar and in the heel cup and the tongue. We've got some printed overlays wrapping around that heel down to the midfoot. And we've got some sort of reinforcement worked around the lace eyelets in the upper. Speaking of laces, we've just got standard shoelaces in the Aeroglide. So no sort of Salomon quick lace system that you tend to see in their trail running shoes. So there you have it a few details about Salomon's latest neutral road running offering. Obviously, we'll talk more about the shoe out on the run and when we get back. But for now, let's get these on our feet, let's get them laced up, and let's see how my legs feel getting back out on the hard stuff.
Okay, so we just uh, made our way up the top of the hill to get away from all the traffic noise. It is so good to be back out in the sunshine. It is a beautiful day here in Cornwall. So we have just ticked past three miles and I have to say it's been a very steady three miles. So been about eight minute, eight, 15 minute mile in. My legs still feel quite trash from the KVK. It was another really hot day and probably the first proper hot day of the year. And I think I got severely dehydrated by the end of that race. So that's definitely slowed down recovery. And I also think there's still a bit of red in half marathon left in my legs. We're just gonna get a steady 10K, seven miles in on today's run, just to ease those legs back in nice and steady. Uh, shoes feeling good so far. First thing I've definitely noticed is I've gone up half a size to a UK 10 from my normal UK 9.5 and the shoe definitely sizes up short, so you really want to go up in size. Uh, my right foot slightly longer than my left, and I'm still pretty close to the end of the shoe in a UK 10. Anyway, let's get back down the hill, back onto the tarmac, and we'll continue this run, see how it goes. Hopefully, as my legs ease up a bit over the duration, I can pick up the pace a bit and push on, just to see how the Aeroglide handles a bit of the quicker stuff. But let's get back down there. Okay, so we are five miles down already. Things are still going good, shoes running well, and the legs have started to ease off and free up a bit, which is always good news. Even though we started out on a slow pace on this run, I am a big fan of the geometry in this shoe. It feels very similar to the geometry that was in the Glide Max, or as Salomon call it, the reverse camber. It always feels like it's trying to get you in a really efficient position to sort of help you with that forward momentum. And like it's always trying to get you to pick up the pace. And to me, it feels very similar to the brilliant speed roll technology you get in the uh, Socony Endorphin range. We've only got about two miles till we get home. So we're gonna pick up the pace a bit and see how the Aeroglide handles it. But so far, so good. six miles got about 0.2 of a mile to go oh my god we got about one and a half quicker miles in it was so windy coming up king george's there I had to really dig in and hold on to the pace but that's all done so let's get back to the studio and we'll break down the performance of the new aero glide in a bit more detail another solid 7.85 miles in the legs out there in the glorious sunshine it really did have a feel of summer in the air today um, and that was awesome and a good first outing for the salomon aero glides lots of positives about the shoe but there really is one thing i'm not sure about but we'll get onto that in a minute first things first the upper of the aero glide seemed to work really well for my foot shape and i personally think it gave me a much better lockdown than the glide max uh, that shoe did have a lot of padding in the tongue and i think it had too much padding which definitely Definitely caused some lockdown issues along the way and it was really hard to get that hold around your midfoot and the laces tended to work loose while you were running and then you'd start to get a bit of foot movement within the shoe. It looks and feels like the Aeroglide has a little bit less padding in the tongue. Still enough that it remains very comfortable across the top of your foot but not too much that it gives you any lockdown problems. So definitely performing better in that midfoot hold department. Also, when it comes to the Glymax, I did have a bit of irritation from the overlays that Salomon had placed on the toe box, especially on any longer runs. Whereas this upper 
doesn't have those same overlays. So again, no problems there. So all in all, just a more comfortable, better fitting upper experience. Midsole ran really well out there today. Although I would say the Energy Foam does feel slightly firmer than the Glide Max. And that's a similar thing that I had when I tested out the Ultra Glide 2. So maybe Salomon have made that blend a little bit firmer when it comes to their Energy Foam. Still very comfortable underfoot, but because of that, it did feel a little bit more responsive as well. I mentioned out on the run that I'm a big fan of that reverse camber geometry that the brand are using. Uh, I think it feels really, really efficient, even when you're running at a steady pace and when you pick up the tempo. And I personally think that it's the standout feature of the last two Salomon road shoes that we've tested on the channel. So you can see lots of positives when it comes to the first outing for the Aero Glides, but there was one thing out on the run today that kind of let the shoe down, and that is the insoles. So while I was running, I thought I could feel the seam of my right sock, and it wasn't bad, but it kept kind of nagging away as I went. And when I got home on closer inspection, it wasn't actually my sock, it was the insole inside the shoe. Now it's gonna be quite hard to show you guys at home, but if I put my hand in the upper, apply some pressure on that insole, I don't know whether you can pick up on, that is movement. So that's movement of that insole in the shoe. And I would say there's probably about five to six mil of movement, which really isn't good enough. And I personally thought that the insoles were just the wrong size for the shoe, but if I pull them out, you might be able to pick up on it. Again, it's quite hard to show you, but there's some sort of creasing uh, on the heel there. And I personally think what's happening is the, the insole's losing shape on that first run and it's kind of curling up the back of the shoe, which is allowing it to move around. I've also got to add, these are really cheap insoles, which is a big shame when you think the retail price of this shoe is 150 pounds. I'm definitely going to have to glue those to the midsole before I'm running them again, because one, that's just going to drive me crazy. And two, I think it's just going to get worse and worse. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you're running in the Aero Glides, are you having the same insole issues? If you are, let us know all about them in the comments below. But there you have it. That is our first run, first impressions on Salomon's latest road running offering, the Aero Glides. Uh, I do find it a little bit frustrating when something as simple as an insole lets the performance of a running shoe down. We're gonna be heading back to the trails for our next couple of first impressions videos because we've just been sent a couple of new shoes from the new Balance brand and it's gonna be the first time I've run in a pair of their trail running shoes. The first one being the very cool looking uh, Unknown Summit V4 in this rather bold colorway, which I actually love. Excited to run a trail shoe with a full fuel cell midsole compound, and it looks like it's got a pretty aggressively lugged outsole, a nice light shoe. I think they're gonna be very exciting to run in. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got these bad boys. I mean, this is definitely gonna be the most cushioned trail running shoe I've ever run in. So this is their Fresh Foam X More Trail V3. A lot of you guys out there have been asking me to review this shoe and I mean, just look at it. Look at that midsole, it is completely bonkers. But again, really excited to test those two out. We're gonna be taking them out over the next couple of days. So keep your eyes peeled, first impressions coming soon. So that is a wrap on another first impressions video here at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it, really hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do, and it is completely free, but it really is a big help. And while you're there, hit that bell icon, turn on the notifications so that you won't miss out on any exciting future content. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. It's really appreciated. We'll be back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. 37.4 mil on your heel and 27.4 mil under your forefoot. So you can see you get a good helping of that soft stuff in the midsole in the midsole. But there you have it, a few details about the latest new... <laughs> Speaking of laces, we've just got a standard pair of shoelaces in these. It's a TTT.